All right, so today is the first trip with the new trailer. Um, I had uh, needed a way to get my chains and binders on here and then stay there. This is an old uh, brine tank from a truck I took apart. It was a dump truck, and I was going to use it for drain pans underneath the uh, trucks when I'm doing in frames. So I cut it in half that way, but I thought that'd be good enough for this trip to put my chains and binders in. It's low enough when the truck comes in. If if I need to come farther forward, it can be over top it, not a big deal. Got my winch handled, it's working okay it seems. I don't know if it'll pull well, we'll see. And I got a chain back here that uh, we'll use to put on the truck. But uh, we're about an hour away from where the trucks are. We're gonna get some fuel and uh, we're gonna head on our way. I don't know if this will show up on video, but this is one pretty steep grade. And of the whole trip, putting his truck on here this is the one that concerns me the most um, mostly because it's 4500 I'm not a big fan of this Duramax right and two it is a long grade up and a long grade up that side so we'll be cruising down this side pretty good I think when we come back so getting back up that side shouldn't be as big a deal but I don't want to labor the truck, and I don't want to go too fast, but it's got to be conscientious. It's a big hill. Lucky coming there. What is this? A Ford pulling a Chevy. Who would have thought? Did get up here and try to line him up, even with the trailer.
It looks like the the fuel tank strap is dragging. They put a little bit of wood under the wheel to see if it'll lift it up just a bit because the tractor's bucket won't curl any lift. And uh, I left the winch on. It's wrapped around the front axle on the outside of the leaf springs. This one is just an extra going around the axle. And I've got four corners coming from that way. So I got two pulling forward. This is pulling back. That's pulling back. These two are pulling forward. And then this one is kind of pulling back. So I think we're well chained. I think we're all right. Tires look good truck suspension handles it just fine and then we uh, took our extra chain and bungeed it so it's not flapping around looking loose so I think we're we're about ready to go and this needs to be a longer piece of chain I'm gonna have to drive that out and get it longer so it can hook back on itself I want to be able to go around the stake pocket so I can pull on both welds not just one I just like it better out there this basket style here this is what I prefer, something like that. Or if I could get multiples, but we're on. So, let's start heading home slow and easy. Ready? Yep. All right, let's go. We're coming up to one of the bigger hills that we're worried about. The last hill we went like 15 miles an hour up, so hopefully this one's okay. This is our big hill that we have to beat. Conscientious going down, so we're not going too fast. Yet not too slow to get up the other side. There's no traffic. Now some of these driveways, so we're going to let her roll a little bit. Made it back 
no troubles, uneventful, and our chains are tight. All of them are still tight, so we must have had it chained down pretty good. It didn't move. So now I'm going to get everything taken loose and uh, we're going to unload it with a great all. We're going to put the dovetail down, but I'm going to grab it. Um, I'm going to chain these axles up and I'll grab it kind of in the middle here and lift it back because I don't want to put all that stress on the winch of it coming back and then um, it doesn't move you get slack in the winch and then all of a sudden it it lunges and it jerks on the winch and that's how that's how uh, cables and winch mounts and winches themselves get broke so we'll try and be more careful so let's get this unchained all right I got the grade all hooked up double chain wrapped all the ratchets and binders chains ratchets binders are all off and I've got the winch disconnected the little box worked out pretty good I'm gonna add a couple more binders a couple more chains because uh, if I had a couple if I had more longer chains rather than ones that are hooked on the binder I could have done it differently and had more options but I'm gonna go get my wife let her make sure it's coming off straight and we're gonna unload her got a little close over there but he was so uh, far off almost done that <clears throat> you were getting over there right at the edge but at the end but you were so close to being off that I yeah. didn't worry about it Okay. All right, so here it is. It's a uh, 99 Freightliner uh, FL112. It's got some nice aluminum tanks on it. Got this toolbox here, but the latch is broke. I can I can replace that. Hey, look, oil. I can replace the latch. I may even have one. Decent tires on this front drive. Um, rears are. Yeah, I didn't worry about the uh, airbags because they had moved it with a crane. You see that torque arm needs replaced there. You know, I figured there's no sense in worrying about the airbags. So it's easier just to move it like this because he told me that they moved it out of, the, out of their shop with a crane when they couldn't get it running. So I just didn't get too upset about it. Um, not a big deal. Again, decent, decent tires. Suspension is decent. It's dirty from sitting next to the green the greenery. You know the brake shoes are decent. The brake chamber's gonna have to be changed. That's getting pretty bad. 
Eh, never mind. I'll probably replace it anyways, but that's just the paint peeling. Overall, not bad. The worst part about it is, uh, you know, sitting at the granary, it got all dirty, all that crap in it. And, uh, <clears throat> that was an issue right there. It's had a cat sleeping in here. But she shows 642,000 miles, dump valve, sliding fifth wheel, got engine brake, a key to her, inner axle lock. I wonder if it has diff lock. Huh, inner axle lock and diff lock, looks like. I'll have to investigate that, I didn't know nothing about that. There's the maintenance records on it. So what <clears throat> what was supposed to have happened was the engine went bad in this and uh, they bought a wrecked truck for the engine because it was the same motor and they put the motor in and uh, couldn't get it to fire up and they looked at it and looked at it and couldn't figure it out. They had it running in the donor truck before they put it in here but they could not get it started in this truck and it's the same engine so anyways it is oh. so, yeah it's 99. 99 missing the door stopper there we'll have to oh it's broken i probably have another one of them i'll have to get the decals off of it because we don't want that anyways let's go look the other side here the hood's in good shape. I mean, it's not even broke or nothing. No cracks, no damage anywhere. Unheard of for one of these hoods. Alright, so... It is... 11-98. FL-112. Uh, let's see. C-12, 410 horse. Um, Overdrive 10 speed, 40,000 pound rears, 373 gear. So that suits us pretty good. That's the retainer for their hush panel. So that'll suit us pretty good. It's going to need a little bit of body work, which I don't normally do body work, but you can see where they spliced it to make an extended cab. Isn't that interesting? Make it a sleeper. Anyways, let me get the hood open and look at the engine. Got some decent tires. All the all the wheels are aluminum freight liners, and the two that I took off the back that were they pulled the wheels off of, uh, the rims were in good shape. They didn't have any any real wear on them. So, nice chrome bumper. It was a good looking truck when when it was on the road. Um, I'll see if I get that open from the front. But um, somebody I know, somebody I've got to know. Um, his grandfather bought this truck brand new and he ran it for several years and um, oh yeah it has a wet tank it has a wet tank <clears throat> PTO still on it you can see it over there like new drive shafts in there anyways let's get the hood open all right so they think they've got everything hooked up apparently not there's some things that are not hooked up um, but I'm sure it's an electrical issue. It's missing the fan clutch. It's all right. We'll figure something out there. Um, frame's in decent shape. Front brakes are, eh, probably a little better than half. So here's where I think the real problem comes in. One is the fact that they think they got everything plugged in. Obviously they don't. Um, look, I got the, the lines. Must have been a different compressor with a governor up here. Didn't have it. Didn't swap it around. But uh, um, all right. So, so you can see that's a 70 pin, and the engine is a 40 pin. I'm sorry, the harness, the OE harness, going to the truck is. A 40 pin so they bought this adapter from cat um, but some of these you can't 
I don't remember which way it is. You can't take a 70 pin to... You can go one way, but not the other. Looks like there's a lot of stuff not hooked up. Anyways, I believe this to be an electrical problem, and um, I'm not saying that I'm great at electrical problems, but um, I would much rather chase an electrical problem than I would swap motors around, and this is a C12 cat as well. Problem is, I don't know what serial number C12 cat this is, because there is no, no sticker on the back. It's gone. There's nothing back here, and I don't know where or cat puts any identifying marks. You know, they, I just don't know. But regardless, this will be the next step is going through, man. Mm. Some of this is probably air conditioning and what have you, but still, it's coming off the AC. That's the OE harness right there. It's a little disturbing when you find the, well, the cables here not hooked up. I mean, I'm thinking I'll have to go over this with a fine tuned comb. Probably the first thing I'll do is see if I can locate a wiring schematic for this engine and uh, see what I can do from there. Um, where does that one go to? Now, I'm not going to turn this into, uh, into the diagnostic part of this video, but I'll tell you what, that's, that's going out the back, back in there. Oh, look, the ground broke off. I don't know if that's an ECM ground. Anyways, I'll have to go through front to back and look at it real good but this is the intention with this is the fact that it's extended cab it makes it real convenient for me to take my dog with me or if you're going somewhere to pick something up you got a little bit more room in the extended cab of course i'll have to get my detailer after it detailer can you detail that yeah it's a little stinky but yeah yeah it's had an animal living in it, it had a cat in it. it is what it is but it'll be all right It'll uh, it'll come around. But that's her. So I think that's it for this one. Uh, next time you see this, we'll start to work through all the pieces and parts that are missing, and figure out the wiring and what's what's there and what's not there. Let's see if we can get her started. Thanks for watching. Well, that's not gonna work. Uh, this should have had a front sump motor, I would imagine. Hmm. We may try and get this thing running and then do something else because look at that you see the distance between a bump stop and the frame that's like four inches that's like an inch that will uh that will break that oil pan in a hurry so that oil pan needs to be flipped and put in the front i don't know if cat works like that or not but Looks like the motor may just have to come back out, but we'll try and get it running first, see what we can do. I'm noticing a lot of things that are just kind of left undone. Like they must've just been trying to get it in and make it run, and then they were gonna go through and finish everything. But yeah, there's a lot left undone. I uh, just traced uh, this one out. This goes to the alternator. By the looks of it, looks like they had it on that bolt right there for a ground that wouldn't work real well that could have fried out the ECM but let's not get ahead of ourselves when we're ready we'll get some batteries in it and start and do some poking around and check and see what we find out it's got oil in it so that's good and it will start they said it will start on starting fluid